Where am I, where are you at uh, this evening? I am at my parents' house, actually, in uh, Boca Raton, Florida. So, how is it down there? It's good. I mean, it's Florida. It's like it's a whole new world here. It's as if nothing ever happened. Everything is opened up. Everything. Everyone is just continuing on living living life. You know, in a very sunny environment um but yeah everything has just been pretty uh, you know it's 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 been great to see to see some sort of some some normalcy come back into 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 play so especially in florida they really jumped on the uh bandwagon to get going and open up the economy oh uh, for sure yeah and and you know that's that's what that's what's up <laughs> making sure that people have that people are, are are doing what they need need to do to to continue living. So, yeah, we I'm in Georgia and we're one of those first states to really try to get back to normal as much as possible. It made a lot of waves. Yeah, I was actually just in um, Atlanta back in October. I was performing at Heretic. Have you heard of it? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I performed there, and um, the first like the first and only club performance I've had this year, uh, or speaking of last year, but everyone was just so excited to get out of the house and you could see it. And, you know, (laughs) everyone was on top of everyone and it was fun. Oh, so true. I mean, us being on top of each other, we just like were breaking out, but then everybody (laughs) got the same idea. And like all of a sudden everybody's out on the roads again. Exactly. But um, so, yeah, I've just been that was like the the, the one the one moment where I, I was like, thank thank you for like, thank God or whatever for making that happen, because, you know, live music needs to be heard live, like music in general just needs to be heard live. And, you know, as much as these virtual things have been uh, a, a constant uh you know, trend and, and whatever during these times, it's, it's a, we, we just need to get back to hearing things live and feeling that, that energy. Cause that's, what's really important. How long have you been performing live now? I've been performing live for, well, I, I started when I was, when I was younger in community theater, school theater. And then I did a lot of lounge performances, restaurants, down here in in the local area and throughout the 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 course of evolution you know one thing led to the next and then and especially when it when my billboard stuff happened my 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 top 10 billboard singles i I would always do club tours for each individual song that that charted and released and i i did that for and still am doing that for um, yeah for like five years now. So it's been it's been an evolution, a journey, and it's going to continue to go onwards and upwards. Yeah, where did you grow up? Here in Boca. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, Floridian yeah. by a native. Yes, yes. Um, I'm not from I'm not from New York, New Jersey. So, um, which is like the the. I'm basically like a rarity because that's that's the um, that like you you get a lot of people from the northern seaboard. Yeah, <laughs> here, that's true. South Florida, especially eastern, eastern South Florida, southeast Florida. That's great. So, yeah. what was it like when the first time you got out there and you took your act solo? Did you do that? Yeah, obviously, like at a venue in Florida. I did. Uh, I actually started performing at an Italian restaurant. It was how that came to be is one night my my family and I, we went for, I think it was either Friday or Saturday, one of the nights. And it just so happened to be to be karaoke night. And I got up there and I did the Andrea Bocelli song, Time to Say Goodbye. Uh, And this is when I was 15. And 
after I did that, there was a standing ovation that followed. And then the owner of the, of the restaurant comes over and says, I, I have a proposition for you. I just lost my Sunday singer. Would you, would you want to fill that spot and be in and hold the fort down, so to, so to speak? And I, I took it. <laughs> oh, what an opportunity! What talk about great timing? That's amazing. Yeah, and and I did that for gosh, from age sixteen to to age twenty one, and then. But because of that, a lot of different people were coming in and, and you know, seeing me. And then from there, like re other restaurant owners would, would come and, and, and see me and want to have me be, like, sing at, at, their, at their establishment as well. So from that point on is what generated a lot of the momentum and the and the and the action for for me down here in in South Florida, and then compounded with I, I was pursuing a, a a career in in songwriting and being a, my own mu musical artist, and so from from there, and having that knowledge of 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 who who I am, it just it all just came together live performance wise. Wow. So did you form the stage name and the persona during that time, just basically getting out there into the public and saying, and kind of branding yourself? Is that when it all kind of came together? Or did that take a, a little bit of time to develop? Well, the this whole stage name I came up with, with Kendra Erica, and because that's that's my that's my legal middle name, but um, the the whole my whole image was all like an evolution. I mean, I started with with bubblegum pop, being that blonde Britney sort of Hannah Montana. I I I call I call it Kendra Kentucky, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but so I it was an evolution from you know bubblegum to minty fresh, really, and. I, I started with pop and then getting more into that whole Lana Del Rey, Ellie Goulding sound, and then merging into into dance because I that's that's what was presented to me and and then from there I was introduced to you know Damon Sharp who I co-wrote all of my all my Billboard dance uh, singles and you know then everyone else just followed. And I just started working with a bunch of influential people. So you developed this through uh, school, through high school, and then did. did you go off to college or you just got into the business immediately? I, I did go to college. That was one of the, one of the, the deals that my, that my mom had with me. She said, I'll continue supporting your music career just as long as you get a four year education. And that is, I I value that. That's that's like the that's like the 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 godsend to to who I am because getting an, an education is is really important to me because not only does it broaden the horizons for you, it it adds it adds longevity to who you are, and it also it also allows you to to grow and to grow your 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 skill set and just to overall organically develop yourself into the person that you want to become um and that's that's just a, a core a core piece of of you know gem that that i that i that i have yeah yeah. What did you study when you went off? And do, do you go to school in Florida? I did. I went to Lynn University and I graduated with a major in communications and broadcast journalism and a minor in international business. That's something to fall back on. That's a pretty good variety. It is. It is. It's something that that 
comes into play day in and day out of what, what I do. It's something that I can I can apply in many different facets of of the industry really and and really carry it carry it home as as I like to say. <laughs> That's great. So going through school, um, did you perform a lot when you were at college? Was, was there opportunities to be in some productions at the school? Yeah, there there were there there were um, different there there were definitely musicals, but I didn't did I get involved in music? I don't I forget. But I was I was mostly doing more of what I wanted to to do. Um, you know, in artistically, independently, because um, that's when I was I was still writing and and recording. I I still maintained that and still did that throughout college, and you know when I was when I was in college and there were different performances, I would I would be a part of them and I would get involved with them as much as possible, uh, just to you know keep the instrument polished and keep keep the keep the the wheels turning and but throughout college I was I was still be I was still an active artist I, that that never stopped so because I I just wanted to continue and make sure that I had I I was steadfast in making sure that this is what I wanted to do so stumbling on the fact that you could sing, when did you realize at first for yourself, like, hey, I can, I can really do this. I can hit these notes. Was that just, were you singing in, you know, by yourself at night saying, wow, you know, I can replicate what I'm hearing on the radio before you even hit the karaoke? Well, for, first of all, I was, I was tone deaf at a young age. And, but then I was introduced to a classical coach who laid a foundation for me and worked out the tweaks and everything and made sure that I had a foundation to build upon. And from there, I having that classical training is really, it's, how do I describe it? Yeah, it's just it's so it's so foundational that you're able to really build your ability upon that. And so from from there, just I started dabbling in all different kinds of genres, and and you know, and I'm still I'm still doing that. I'm still seeing like where where my uh, ability can can take me, and yeah, and I just continue, and and I add like my little signature classical nuances and signatures into into my dance stuff into what i what i do so wow yeah. i think that is i think it's an eye-opening thing when somebody comes out like a classical trainer and that's got to be just like you know a discovery in a way i would think that's you know it's like wow i didn't realize and they could pull something out of you that you didn't know that you had so I think that that's really where training comes in. Not everybody responds to training. So, I mean, that that's a big kudo right there. How did you get into songwriting? How did you learn how to craft songs on your own? And then to collaborate with people, you've collaborated with many. Yeah, I've, I've collaborated with, with a, a, a variety of people and really how I, well, I, I, I always found a, saw a fascination in in taking a song from an embryonic stage to a full a full scale production and that that fascination led me to want to create and write my own my own songs because I was like wow that's really interesting how how this person could you know craft that and this person could craft that and for me, I, I wanted to see if I could really do it, and it looks like I can. Looks like I could do it. <laughs> so obviously, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, how did the whole career, recording uh, career start? Was that through the high school, college? What, what was your first recording, and how did you build on that? My first recording, my first original recording, was 
was is I don't I don't know the uh, the 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 proper tense for it is but um, <laughs> well it still exists so it would be is your first still, yeah it's it's still there it's like not really where um but it, it was a song called for you I wrote it with two brothers down in Miami David and Johnny Gulka and Fabian Hernandez who's collaborated with um, Ellie Goulding and, and many others, many like la Latino artists really in, in the Miami area. Um, and yeah, like I said, it was before, it, it was that bubblegum quintessential pop song that would be perfect for, for a Disney Channel movie. Um, <laughs> that but, sounds. <laughs> yeah, and and then I wrote another song with them called uh, Dance With You or Dance With Me. I wanna dance with you. Yeah, it was Dance With You. I have to like sing it back to know like the exact, like the correct title. Um, <laughs> Cause it was so long ago and I've gone through transformation and reinvention. Um, but like, I'm still, uh, I feel I feel like I had to go through the reinvention in order to get to where I am now, which is, it's I'm I'm in a vehicle to to show my roots now and I'm in a I'm in a vehicle to show really who I always wanted to be as an artist as as a person so it's just yeah the, this moment right here is really is really interesting for me to look back and and reminisce and and reflect on that on that sentiment really it seems like kind of a Miley Cyrus kind of evolution, uh, just like, you know, that, that bubblegum type stuff in, you know, it's, it's very accessible. It's, it's, it's very quickly mass produced. Then you're, you're starting to grow as you're getting older and getting deeper. And it, it really, I, I think, you know, as life experiences carry on, I think you, you could see that that's become much more inspirational in your work. So I have you know, hats off to you for, for making that transformation. Well, yeah, thank you. It, it's, um, it's one that, that I'm not necessarily like proud of, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have gone through, through that. And, and also it, I always wanted to be that, that, that artist that, that as soon as um, let me rephrase that 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 was and is solid in who she is because i just wanted to get all of my all my tizzes and and all of that like funky stuff out of the way before before i you know made it in a larger scale um, Cause that's how you can really be influ influential and and inspirational. And I think the the inspirational side of things is where I I want to strive in, in in being. And because in or in order to be in order to be a, an inspiration, you need to be like a guiding light, and you need to know who you are first before you can you know inspire and lead others and if you don't really know who who you are then you know that that's that's just a, a different conversation <laughs> how does it feel to like inspire people what what is that like when you just when you know you made an impact do you get any feedback from fans people in the on email or social media i do get i i do get a lot of a lot of very uplifting words and and comments sent my way, which is which is great because then it it just fuels me even more to continue on doing what I what um, I've destined myself to to do, and that's been that's just been a a, a gift in and of itself. Yeah. How does your family feel? Do you have siblings? Do you have your parents there? I, I I'm an only child. I have I have critical OCS only child syndrome. 
Um, <laughs> I have one of my own here. <laughs> oh. I grew up and moved away. Yeah, so I, I'm an only child um, for, to my knowledge. Um, <laughs> yeah, to my knowledge, but yeah, and, but my, my parents are, are supportive and I think it's because I held up my end of the bargain in getting that, that college education. <laughs> Yeah, it's really important to having put one through school and she was the one and only I can really kind of relate probably with your parents about like, yeah, here was the bargain, you know, she got to study what she wanted to study and then go off and do what she wanted to do. And yeah. you know, I supported that along the way. But it's tough because it's like, yeah, you know, I let her kind of her call the shots and I felt like is she driving the ship too much. I don't know, but you know, it's, it's her life. And, you know, I, you, as a parent, you kind of shepherd them along, but everybody's got their own technique. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 um, every, every technique is, is, um, every technique is, uh, is independently, you know, necessary for, for that. That's great. That's yeah. fantastic. So how much touring did you get to do before COVID hit? Did you get to go uh, across the whole country? Yeah, I was doing, I was doing, you know, national venues, international venues. And then all of a sudden it was like, <laughs> like I'm hearing from everybody and it's just, it's so important to try to get everybody out there, even when we're doing this virtual stuff. So they know you're there. So mm -hmm. it's, that's gotta be so frustrating because you want to, be able to continue your craft and it's it's hit everybody in so many different ways it it has been actually for for me absolutely has the live aspect been removed or i want to say removed but temper temporarily been put on the shelf um because it will come back um but the the recording and the writing and the in-house um the in-house uh how do, I, how do i say this the the in-house like not duties but um activities have have remained active and i wanted to to have that be so because that's the silver lining of all of this is that you know before before the pandemic there was just so many different you know, distractions. We were just, you know, I, I honestly feel like before the pandemic, like we weren't as, as aware of what's really like going on. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and then people just started getting a clear view of what's actually going on in their, in their lives. And they were able to, the distractions were able to, you know, calm down and be silenced and quieted and now people could focus on their core values like their their health their happiness like the their family their close friends and most of all the the most superior of all that is is what's inside of you how do you feel like what are your what are your thoughts what are your what are your independent what is your what what is your independent voice want to say and want to or or help shape the world into what it wants to, or what it what it, not what it needs to be but what what it's destined to be um and the distractions just sort of quieted down and then i was able to hear ideas clearer um and so that i i applied that that sort of idea clarity into into my into my craft so, and I have the saying that like the, the noise had to die so the music could come alive. So that's, that was the silver lining. And I feel like I've done a significant amount of growth this year, or this past year, and gonna continue the, 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 the growth mountain this, uh, this year too. Yeah. So tell us about your big single that has been released early this year, Song of Hope. Uh, yeah work with some pretty big names to get this to happen it's just such a gorgeous song and 
so big and beautiful. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you. I I collaborated with Charlie Midnight on on Song of Hope and Jan Fairchild, and we we did this remotely. This was at, Song of Hope was the first song I recorded remotely and virtually. I was able to do the vocals down here in 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 South in Fort Lauderdale with my engineer, and then have the vocals sent to to Charlie and and Jan out in California. And I had, and I had met them pre. Actually, I was in I was in Los Angeles in February, like yeah, a year ago around this time, and. I, I met with Charlie. We clicked. I hadn't met Jan in in person. I just met him on uh, via Zoom. But Charlie and I clicked. He was like, "You're great." I was like, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> wow. And um, uh, and so we were able to put this 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 inspirational piece together and and in the midst of of the pandemic. And it was supposed to be for for just the pandemic, but then everything else just started, you know, coming to the service, like it, like it, issue wise, and especially with you know child sex trafficking be, becoming more mainstream, and with you know just children in general and their and their futures, and and that's and I feel that's when the the universe brought War Child to me and and so that's how that's how War Child and and I in a divine state came together you know realistically it was like oh you know it's a very business uh proposition but I I I'm just being being um a a figurehead and and in, in face or or in in voice for war, war child is it's it's a it's a pretty immaculate feeling what and and uh for those who don't know what is war child uh who is war that child is an organization worldwide that that gives children opportunities to develop in education and in their communities in the midst of war climates. So War Child swoops in and basically salvages their 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 future. So if if you purchase the single, does any uh, do any profits go towards that? Yes. Um each view and each view for the Song of Hope music video, the portions of the proceeds go to War Child. And that is available on your YouTube channel, uh, Song of Hope? Yes, it's on my YouTube channel. Um, it's under Kendra Erica Music on YouTube. And yeah, just watch it and and spread the spread the word and 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 spread the uh spread the cause. <laughs> And Song of Hope was shot in uh, various locations. Uh yeah, because it, of how many were there? Yeah, it was mostly shot in Malibu and uh, Topanga Canyon out in uh, California. I got some relatives out there. I have a cousin who lives in Malibu. So I've been there for ages, years and years. Just gorgeous. Loves being in the ocean all the time. Oh, so. yeah. Well, Pacific Palisades, the uh, the Pacific Coast Highway, I mean, that that drive is, is, is wonderful. <laughs> That really is. What was it like shooting that video? Was it a very long shoot? Did you do it over several days? It was actually just one day. Um, it was, yeah, it was 14, 14 hours. Yeah, I got up, I woke up at like four in the morning because hair and makeup was going to be at my, at the Airbnb that I was at. Um, and, you know, when you have to wake up that early, it's like, can you just not wake me up and just do my hair and makeup while I'm sleeping still like <laughs> we do that <laughs> that like, would be nice <laughs> yeah like my face will be totally calm I won't have to like you know my eyes won't be twitching when you're coming near me with the you know the liner but um yeah we 
we filmed it in in on the Malibu Beach side, and then we went into uh, to make a canyon, and we filmed it at this at this super artisanal and creative uh, dome house. The 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 architects built it from all from scratch, and you could you could really see and feel the love put in that that was put into this this house but and and it was the perfect uh location and and backdrop for for a song of hope May, beautiful video as as a yeah. video editor by trade i love how that was put uh, yeah absolutely oh, well, thank you <laughs> it was really well directed as well and you seem like a natural like you could actually jump into acting you know that's that's on the that's on the horizon. I, I'm always that's amazed how people who are just really great at, at performing, singing, playing instruments as well too, uh, who could just jump in and they have a persona and they they really make a very good jump into acting, whether it's comedic or dramatic. It's I, I'm always astounded by that. It's interesting how that is. There there has to be something behind that, and I'll figure it. I'll figure it out one yeah. of these days. <laughs> Never have. I'll, figure, I'll, I'll figure it out when when I do it. <laughs> so you just basically do you record singles? Do you have full length EPs or albums? How's your I'm working, recording history? I'm working on. Well, I've I've just been doing single after single because that's what's you know worked. But I am working on putting together an album, and it's gonna be. I don't want to hype it because that's not who I am, but all I can say, I'm just going to let it speak for itself and it'll, it's going to, it's going to have a nice, a nice volume when, yeah. <laughs> when it comes out. It's, it'll, it'll, it'll just show you what's up. <laughs> So, so with uh, working with some of these uh, names, like, like Charlie Midnight, what's it like working with Charlie Midnight? Oh, it was fun. It was just like, you know, yeah. it, I mean, that's a big name. That's somebody who's worked with some pretty big artists out there. Yeah, he he and I just we we click. We have like the similar person personalities, similar sense of humor, you know, and that's really important because when you're when you're when you're creating something, you it needs to be it needs to the, the process needs to be of ease and it needs to be fun you know when it's forced it won't the the products will will re reflect that 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 it was forced but if the if the process is fun you know and and if there are a lot of laughs involved like if there are a lot of laughs involved the 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 song is going to reflect that you know and it's it's gonna it's it's gonna be more of that positive more of that positive reflection. So and you and, also work with Mark Mangold as well. Yeah, Mark Mangold. We we did Avalanche. Uh, he's his his mind and creativity is like a freak of nature. Um, he, he I call him like a a mad scientist of music because it's just the it's just insane how concepts are just you know flowing through his head and it was it was great to witness that and to work with that yeah avalanche and another one so fly those have been on charts and have been streamed probably i'm sure there's some stats out there about how many times they've been streamed how does that feel like you know people are really listening now yeah, well, like for for me, people, I I honestly, like people tell me that, oh, they're, they're like, oh, I heard your song here and I heard your song there, and I'm just I'm just the person that just likes to, and not not that I I don't like hearing that by any means, but I'm just the person that just likes to live my life you know I like I do have like this like burning ambition but at the same time I just I just let go and let God but for for me I, I just like to you know li live my life and just be just be KE just be Kendra and then if you know if, if my song is being 
played massively. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, sometimes you have to leave work at work sometimes and just, you know, put compartmentalize, I think is the key word there. It's just to try to yeah. just keep it, keep it real. Exactly, just keep it real. Like, don't force anything. You don't need to... You don't need to be a, a fugazi there like because then you're 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 just like wasting time if you're a fugazi because you know time is time is money time is valuable and you know being being as open and as uh as you as possible is is what's you know the the cat's meow <laughs> oh totally so yeah. it, do you plan on staying in Florida or do you want to like relocate or you could do this from anywhere really? Oh yeah. And just this past year proved that like greatly. Um, you know, just like everyone, everyone's finding that they can work from work, work from home. Um, but I, I was going, I was considering moving to, to California before the before COVID, and now I I think I'll I'll, I'll stay in Florida. <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of great recordings been done down in Miami. I mean, the Bee Gees yeah. done so much. It's so really honestly nowadays with our technology. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, hands down. Yeah, and. And and also, I just like being in Florida because my my family's here, and and I just like being rooted. You know, it's it's a good feeling. Yeah, it, it is a good mix. It, it truly is. Unless you really want to like, you want to go off to New York and you want to be on Broadway. Maybe that will be back one day. That's yeah. Maybe that will be back one day. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane. Be how that's all like like it crazy <laughs> <laughs> so when would you plan on working on this new project when would the album be coming out your future album future album i am foreseeing later later this year later this year pot, at the latest early next year but the sooner the better oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, your product out there and you got to go back out there and shoot more music videos. That's <laughs> well, that's don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine, though, if you just did music videos um, and did just more performance ones instead of these more concept ones, it'd be a little bit easier. I don't think you'd have to do 14 hour days. Yeah, I just show up, do the dance and leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would think you have that. So where can we find you on? You're very active on social media, I've noticed. So what do you prefer to be on most? You have a heavy Facebook presence. Instagram is pretty big with you too. Yeah, and and my TikTok is growing too. So, but I, uh, <laughs> you can see me doing all kinds of wild stuff on TikTok. Not too wild, but like for, for me looking at it, I'm like, Kendra. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do on TikTok though? I mean, are they very, very short segments? Are you doing like certain concepts on there? A little bit of song snippets and... Song snippets, me just being my goofy self. Um, me just showing as much personality as I can. Like I'm treating TikTok as like my audition reel for whatever that may come my way. <laughs> um, but Instagram is, is, is pretty solid. Same with Facebook. Twitter too, Spotify, all of them, all the, all the, uh, the, the spearheaders. Yeah. That's how you got to get yourself out there. It's just, uh, you got to be in the game. Yeah. You, you, you just gotta, you gotta be on the, you gotta be on the social media. <laughs> yeah. As the kids always say, you gotta mm -hmm. do them all. That's for sure. Well, I, this is a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining me, stopping by the corners. It's Thank been you so much, Robert. <laughs> you take it easy. Have a good one. You take too. Care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.